Hello, everybody. We are Jim Dandy from Madison, Wisconsin. Now, I grew up a Brewers fan. I'm from Wisconsin, so, you know, be easy on me. But, you know, the Brewers and the Cardinals used to be in different divisions, and I always loved Ozzy Smith. So I thought the best thing I could do when I came out here was to do the backflip. And I remember I could not do backflips, so I thought that that's not going to happen today. But Jim Dandy makes athletic space rental easy. And if you think about it, without athletic space, there would not be sports. You can plan a league, you can do training, you can do all this stuff. But if you don't have a literal place to play, you can't have sports. And Jim Dandy is the only company in the United States that is solely focused on making renting of this athletic space, managing of this athletic space easy. We have a great founding team set up to attack this problem. Uh, me and Joe worked together on my previous startup. He was my first, one of my first hires on my previous startup. We have both experienced this problem. Uh, Joe ran a soccer league in Madison. I've run leagues, camps, uh, clinics, and all sorts of things. And it's always you know, one of the biggest problems in running an event. Uh, my experience, I most recently was at Sports Engine out of uh, Minneapolis. Uh, when I was there, it was called Sport Engine. Uh, they were recently acquired by NBC Sports in one of the very large uh, sports software uh, acquisition transactions. Uh, I ran, I was the director of media and advertising at Sport Engine, and uh, basically had a front row seat kind of where they went from a Series A of three and a half million to when I had left, they had raised over $40 million in venture capital. Uh, previously to Sport Engine, I ran WISports.net. Uh, WSN over Sports.net is a high school sports media entity out of the state of Wisconsin. Uh, at one time, we had the largest independent high school sports website in the country, and WSN was acquired by Sport Engine, which is how I ended up at Sport Engine. Uh, my co-founder Joe, who is uh, doing all the development and engineering on our, for our company, he recently was a uh, full-stack developer at Propeller Health, which is a startup in Madison. And prior to that, he was at Sonic Foundry uh, as the director of operations for seven years. They're a publicly traded company. Uh, he managed over 15 people and over a $20 million product pipeline. So if you look at our marketplace, there's renters and helps. So if you look at the renters, these are just numbers for team sports. So these don't even include the people that are doing the individual sports, uh, adult fitness, yoga, all the different kinds of people that need space, whether it's a, a football field or a, or a studio. And then on the other side, oops, a little tricky there. On the other side, you have the people that actually host, the hosts that own the facilities. Uh, combined around 100,000, those are the three biggest categories. And if you think of the, the biggest problem that exists, right, you have a lot of demand and you have a lot of supply, but there's just a lot of inefficiency in the middle. 68% of initiating a rental transaction is done by phone or email. And if you think about that, what are you going to do today? That's how you start out a transaction. Uh, payments are made with checks and invoices, nothing's online. It, it's just very, it's not very efficient. So our solution, if you look at what we're going to do for the renter side, it's quite easy. Search. So we're going to have spaces in there, you'll be able to search by your date, by your time, by the kind of field you need. You'll be able to filter by things like amenities, like let's say you need lights, let's say you need a certain number of nets, uh, whatever your criteria might be. You'll be able to book, everything's online, done with a credit card, uh, including refunds and everything else. And then play, right? Let's, let's spend more time playing and less time organizing. Uh, for this, we are going to take a renter transaction fee of 5%. This fee uh, does not come out of the host's uh, income, it, it comes out hop. So think of it like a Ticketmaster service charge, so to speak. We're providing a service to make their life easier. Um, one woman I talked to in Milwaukee that her son made a soccer tournament that they weren't expecting to make, and she got volunteered to be the one to step up four hours of practice time. It took her 18 hours. 18 hours on the phone, calling people, calling schools, calling churches, calling partner art departments to try to find the space for their practices. A couple of screenshots, I mean, this is going to look very familiar to other things that are on the internet, whether it be a hotel search, Airbnb, etc. Um, the results come up, these are just some fake results we populated from the St. Louis area. And you can see it looks as good on mobile as it does in, uh, on the desktop. Uh, the host solution, so what we're doing for the host, the first part is what we call monetize. So facility listing, the facility listing is free. Um, our goal is in target markets. We're, we are going to provide these facility listings. Kind of think like Yelp, how Yelp has all the restaurant listings, but then restaurants can do more if they want to go above and beyond the listing. Sell available inventory, they will be able to put uh, time blocks on our site and sell them right directly to our, our audience. And then, oh, sorry. Huh. Tricky button there. Sorry about that. There we go. Uh, but then sell available inventory online, and then lastly, Mark B. Um, one of the people that's going to be our pilot customer, uh, she owns an indoor futsal facility in Milwaukee. Uh, she also owns a, a ticket broker called Ticket King. And 
the very first thing she said, like 10 minutes into our meeting, she said, you're StubHub, right? Just like StubHub helps me sell my unsold tickets, you're gonna help me sell my unsold time in my facility. From there, we have a managed perspective of our, of our offering. Uh, essentially, it'll allow you to do internal bookings. Those are bookings where it's zero dollar rental, you know, where you're getting, let's say a school has their coaches and their coaches don't pay a fee. So if you want to use that part of our platform, there's a monthly fee. Group settings for things like discounts, um, tax exempt, uh, priority. We're also going to have a permissioning systems on top of this, so you can have your inventory available to a certain group and then release it to another group later. Uh, operations management right now, like if you look at a park and rec department, one we just talked to recently, at the beginning of the week they, they put out a 50 page report with like what has to be done that week. And then if like some, if something changes, if something gets added, you know, you need to draw these lines at 60 feet instead of 55 feet, it's, it's at a call, it's everything else we want to do right on a mobile phone. And then lastly, big data and reporting. Kind of again, some park and rec people we talked to, um, one of them is trying to build eight new soccer fields. And they're trying to get funding for it, and they're telling everybody that we use our soccer fields a lot, and they cannot do anything beyond it. They can't say, we utilize them 38% of the time, or 52% of the time, they have no data to layer onto that, no reporting uh, available. Market opportunity, um, if you look at that SaaS management component, with over 100,000 organizations, the average fee is gonna be about $500 a year. So that's a $50 million opportunity. And if you look at the transaction fee of 5%, um, if all of the spaces in the universe of the United States, if they all rent five, uh, less than five hours a week at $30 per hour, it's a $375 million opportunity with that 5% fee. So you're looking at a total market opportunity of $425 million. And we think that with a partner like Stadia, we can get there faster and bigger. There's also tertiary sources of revenue. These things kind of will come into play when we have scale. Uh, so once we achieve scale, it, even marketplace, it, even in individual markets, uh, we'll be able to take advantage of some of these other revenue opportunities. Our growth strategy is we're going to start in Wisconsin, especially in, in Missouri and St. Louis. If, if, uh, we are selected in the stadium program. Um, all, I'm lucky enough to have some great relationships in Wisconsin for my 15 years in the state with high school and youth sports. Uh, from there, we're going to look at target markets, search marketing, and vendor partnerships to really help accelerate our growth. What we essentially are hoping to do over the next year is to come up with repeatable sales processes so we can attack the bigger national uh, opportunity. And then there's a national opportunity. We're going to pass the ball from Wisconsin National. Can anybody name this play? Anyone? Pick a fence for Hoosiers. <laughs> <coughs> so industry overview. Facility scheduling. So currently facility scheduling is done in vertical channels through software companies that provide kind of a jack of all trades array of services. They provide everything from facility scheduling to registration to 1099 to hourly payroll to email marketing, a little bit of everything. And basically, because they have all this maintenance to do and all these different products to look at, none of them are innovating. These are the leaders in the various uh, vertical channels. Um, and the kind of interesting thing is while they do offer facility scheduling, anybody that uses any of these products can still list their extra inventory on our site. We can still be the place where they sell their unsold inventory uh, if they decide they, you know, they like their scheduling offering or they don't want to switch or whatever. So we can still partner with a lot of the company or with a lot of the companies that use these companies like that. We look at the industry leaders. Uh, Sports Engine, I mentioned, I worked there. The interesting thing about the other two, and I guess Sport Engine in a way, none of these existed a year ago. So Sport Engine just became Sport Engine, Sports Engine with NBC. Blue Star Sports a couple of months ago acquired two of Sport Engine's biggest competitors. They announced a $100 million uh, Series A round from Jerry Jones, who owns the Cowboys. And Sports Illustrated Play acquired three of Sport Engine's competitors, started a company out of, out of nowhere, and now they're kind of the, the main players in the market. These are a list of all the companies they've acquired in just the past year. Um, and so basically, these guys are buyers, not builders, right? They're trying to find innovative tech, they're trying to find additional revenue sources in the industry, and that is basically the model that all of them are, are following right now. So our progress to date, uh, we are launching this month, um, and we have five pilot customers, we're talking to several more. Uh, we hope to have a couple of bigger partner act departments on board as well, in addition to a couple of schools that I'm really close to closing out. Uh, Funding-wise, uh, we raised 95000 at the end of December. Um, we're in the middle of a round right now. We have 105 committed out of a $200,000 round. 
Um, we also are uh, in a program with the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation where uh, if we raise a certain amount of money, it's a 4 to 1 national loan of $100,000, and they also have a tax credit program uh, that applies to funds. And then insurance partnership, um, we're trying to integrate insurance into the platform, and that's one of the things currently that is a roadblock for people that want to rent. Like, if I want to go rent my local school gym and I want to go play pickup basketball, let's say, I have to have a commercial liability insurance policy. A lot of people won't have that, and so we're trying to factor that in. Uh, we have a partnership, uh, finalizing the details, it'll basically be 0.85% to 1.05% of the rental fee for coverage, depending on if you have your own uh, insurance or not already. So that is Jim Dandy. Uh, I, I appreciate your questions. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys tonight at the demo. Um, and, and thank you very much. Thank you for having us here. And I'll open it up, I'll open it up to the floor. Okay, the gentleman with the microphones. Let's see. We got one here, we got one back there. Come on. Okay. Where's the third microphone? You know, thank you for that, John. Question yeah. in your uh, application, you're forecasting a $70,000 revenue stream this year. What's that predicated on? Uh, that's predicated on uh, 100 spaces, signing up 100 spaces, and then renting uh, five hours a week um, at that $25 to $30 per rental fee range. Yes? Yep. Back there. Full disclosure, I'm Greek too. <laughs> Ham Field, that's what we actually do with Red Field. Yep. We use the next platform. Yep. So here's a very specific question is, if we put our inventory in Jim Dandy, is it going to face our integration whatsoever that says this uh, the space has been rented at the same time we all use schedule? Yep. Or everybody does. Um, how do you integrate our management? Sure. Um, so there'll be two different ways to do that. The first way would be to switch your scheduling over to our platform, which we're trying to build a more robust, more efficient scheduling tool with mobile access and a lot of things the others don't have. Um, if, if you want to keep using Dash Platform and you just want to utilize us for the online component and the, uh, the marketplace component, um, initially it will be more of a manual process. You will get a rental through and you'll have to have somebody mark it off on your other scheduling system. Eventually we would like to have API connections with some of the bigger scheduling players in the space where people can still continue to use their scheduling software if they would like, but then they can push their access space to our marketplace. Show the hands questions. Uh, yeah. So, have you looked at like some of the other models, like things like Venue Spot or like, you know, Venue Up that are kind of like, you know, obviously different type of sector, but like, looking at their models, how they've been successful in terms of capturing their customers and being able to convert them. So, I guess, my question is, what are like the first two markets? How much do those kind of make up in terms of the, um, the addressable market size? Uh, you mean the first two markets we're going to go into? Yes. Um, so we see the Madison market, or they're actually the Wisconsin market, I can say the Wisconsin market, um, could, could easily be a million dollar market for us. I mean, we think it could be a little bit bigger. Um, the second market, I guess it just depends on where we grow. And that's a lot, you know, the CD application asked, um, what do we need help with? What do we want to get to the accelerator program with? We feel like we have a great program, um, great idea, great application, a great team. Uh, I I can get a meeting with anybody in the state of Wisconsin. How do we grow nationally, right? And, and I think that's where we're really, you know, if we get accepted into a program like this, you know, where we would like the most assistance is that kind of sales planning. And I've done sales for the past ten years, but it's still a little different when you're trying to negotiate a whole thing and also kind of a new market because it's, it's different. I mean, we, we are essentially first to market. There is nobody doing this, right? There are people doing it with office spaces or event spaces and whatever. Nobody has decided to try to tackle the athletic market. Thanks. Yeah, on the uh, more of the marketing side, I'm pretty clear what the target market is. But should be elaborating more on the picture customer acquisition strategy and who are you targeting and how do you get to those? Sure. Um, so on the host side, um, our target, our, our market acquisition strategy is essentially kind of what I said about the Yelp listing. So we're going to go, like right now in Dane County, we're building out listings for every single place where you can rent athletic space in Dane County. And then what we hope to do is utilize that data to communicate with them, like, hey, do you know that you know, 300 people looked at your profile on Jim Dandy. And, or, do you want to add stuff to your profile? Do you want to make your profile better to get people to rent your space? So we're going to try to use that as an entry point into a conversation with them. Um, 
marketing on the host side or on the renter side, initially we feel like it'd be a little bit like almost like Open Table, where if you want a restaurant reservation, you go to the restaurant website right away, and then you end up at Open Table. We kind of see that we'll have that effect initially, but then once we get markets where, like let's say in the St. Louis market, we have 100 gyms on our platform. We are going to spend money search marketing, uh, Facebook social marketing, trying to push that up to those renters, to the youth club teams, to the private coaches. Um, we've even talked to a couple people about potential partnerships with uh, private coaching services and those kinds of things that are always looking for space to try and help uh, basically fill both sides of our marketplace. So, you may have asked, uh, answered this question earlier, I just want to make sure. So, and I've been getting this for 15 years in uh, another mental area, and I've been for more than 14 years and so forth. What do you do when it's double book and triple book? Well, our, our system will prevent double booking and triple booking. It's, it's basically, the way, we're, the way we're a little bit different technology-wise is every other system is what we call calendar-based. So it's Google, it's Google Calendar, right? It's, it's Google Calendar with a few little bells and whistles on top of it. Our system is more of an inventory-based system. You set available inventory, you say that our gym is available, our, our space, our soccer field, whatever, and when it's rented, it's taken out of inventory and it can't be rented again. Um, now, if there's a situation where they're trying to maintain a couple calendars or something, it's hard to find a solution for that. Uh, but we think the idea of having this inventory-like system and treating it more like inventory and less like a calendar will help. Uh, one interesting story about that, my wife was trying to book space for a girls' voucher, but it's not sports, but it's still trying to book space for a school. And she went, she went on their calendar to do all this stuff, and she's like, I'm on that room for that time. And they said, oh, it's not available. She's like, well, it's, it's, it's not booked. Well, it's not available. So that happens a lot as well with the athletic space. Um, let's say, uh, you know, a park department, they cut their lawns every Wednesday morning. But it's not on their online calendar, so you think it's bookable, but then it's technically not available. So we're, we're eliminating that by having an availability-based system, an inventory system, where when you get your search results, you know it's going to be available. That's only works if you have 100% exclusive availability. Hey, David, can you say it again? Yeah. Is it on? That only works if you have 100% uh, exclusive rights to every facility in the network area. That's the issue. Is that Park and Rec will tell you you have it, and you set it at the school, they'll turn around and lease it to someone else. And they have a Yeah, and so that's why we're hoping, that's why we really are building up the scheduling side, so we become their scheduling system. Because if we become their schedule, that's actually something where when I first got into this, it was all marketplace. And then when I started talking to people, it's like, we need to build software because not only will it help with those double booking issues, but the software everyone's using, they don't like. Um, and I've had meetings where, one meeting where a uh, county parks person spent the entire time walking me through her, her system and complaining about it, and that was the entire meeting. So we, we, it became pretty obvious that we need to build up that side and have that be an effective piece of our strategy. How are you thinking about uh, it's on the side. How are you thinking about quality control for the information that's on the site? Descriptions of the facilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in the beginning we're obviously gonna be keeping a pretty tight rein on it. Um, and especially in the very beginning, every every space that will be on our site will be it won't be self-service, it will be through us. Once we get into that self-service mode, um, we hope to have like a pretty good vetting process, um, almost similar to like Airbnb, where uh, they're able to kind of check out new spaces and like who signed up, what's their email address, is it the same domain, uh, is it the same domain name that that facility has or that school has, things like that that are more simple and then things that are a little bit more detailed, where we would actually call and try to have an interaction with that host to make sure that they're the owner, that their uh, information is accurate. From there, what we hope is to have an entire network of feedback on both sides. So on the renter side, we can have a feedback loop where they can, like, you know, potentially say, like, this, you know, they, you know, they, they're, they have dirt all over their field, or you know, big holes in their whatever, dead spots in their floor. And on the, on the host side, they can say, like, hey, this renter stiffed us, and they can black flag them and then other people. So it's kind of like network effects that once more people use it, the more effective the platform will be. Those feedback features are going to be part of the system to begin with, or is that That would be like future features. And then those would be most effective once we have scale in the markets. Last question in the back. Uh, there you go. Um, I heard you talk earlier when your growth strategies would be partnerships, mm -hmm. like partnerships. So from 
National Register right now and would be an ideal candidate for that to kind of help you grow the national year regionally. Yeah, so vendor partnership wise, we'd be looking at companies that sell complementary products to similar industries. So Sports Engine would be a great example. Um, they, they don't have this product. I mean, one of the reasons when I started this company, or when I started researching this company, was because customers of Sport Engine that wanted this kind of service, I saw where we referred them to and thought, wow, there might be an opportunity here. So people like that that are selling to similar groups um, that we can partner with to kind of help grow. The other thing would be the API relationships down the road with the bigger scheduling platforms that you know are kind of jack of all trades people but might be able to push their extra space to us. Those are kind of the things initially. And then on the host side, or on the renter side, um, we would look heavy at uh, the fitness industry, uh, the private coaching industry, which is getting really big, where you're not only playing on a club team, but you also have a private coach, and you have a private trainer. Um, so those kinds of things on the renter side, we think we'll be able to help quite a bit as well. And that is it. You are off the hot seat. Nice going. Thank you very much.